shall we start thermal design of battery pack? Okay. It is a very interesting chapter, subsection basically of uh, battery development design of the battery pack. Here we will talk about different types of, first we will see wh why thermal management is required or thermal design is required. Then we will see what are the types of thermal management system available, how can we utilize in our system, uh, where and what type of thermal management system we require, what are the benefit, merits and demerits of those thermal pack, uh, thermal design. So, this all we talk about extensively in this uh, subsection. So, before that I just want to take some water. So, let us start with thermal design of battery pack. It is my favorite chapter because I know little bit more on this than anything else. Okay. So, thermal design of a battery pack, why it is important? Have you heard about thermal runaway? Thermal runaway is a process where whole battery burns without giving you any much indication. And then physics behind the thermal runaway is still not known fully. We know only in bits and pieces. And it behaves more like a bomb, explodes. What we know, generally this happens because of some impurities in chemical, uh, chemical composition or because of the <coughs> improper charging and discharging, even some time with proper charging and discharging, everything within control and if battery is aging, is something known, known as dendrite formation. Since battery is made, now you cannot scan every day the battery that is what is happening and it can lead to the thermal runaway. But what are the indicator which we know? The one indicator which we know, the temperature starts changing rapidly. Till certain level, the temperature goes smoothly and then it changes rapidly, very fast change in temperature. What we also know before thermal runaway happens, you may get a gas leakage, combustible gas leakage. If you are able to identify the combustible gas leakage and if you have a proper arrangement, you may be able to mitigate thermal runaway or you may be able to isolate all the things. This is one of the reason, safety reason why thermal management is very much needed in a battery pack. We will talk about all other reasons because before going to uh, the other reasons, I wanted to show why it becomes extremely important. The temperature of the pack, why a thermal management is important? The temperature of the pack directly impacts what? Electrochemical reaction. Any reaction is generally a function of temperature. The rate of reaction is generally a function of temperature. We also know that Arrhenius equation, rate equation. Efficiency of the pack. A battery pack works most efficiently between some temperature limits. Below that also it won't work efficiently. After that band, it also again it won't work efficiently. Charge acceptance. A battery pack need to be charged. It can take full charge at some particular temperature or in band of temperature. Beyond that, the temperature 
the further increase in temperature may lead to the situation like thermal runaway or the efficiency of the battery pack you lose by some percentage. Power and energy availability, it is completely dependent on temperature. If my battery pack temperature is going from some certain limit, because that could lead to the failure of the battery pack, we stop any inflow or outflow of the energy. So, the temperature of the pack should be in certain limit. If it is going beyond or below, both side we cut off the battery from the external world, means there is no energy flow in or out. Safety and reliability, if temperature keep on going up, the material, the pack material what we have talked may lose its, its strength. Even the cell will lose its strength, its life and the cycle. The number of cycle, if it can run, let us suppose thousand cycle in some particular temperature band. And if you are not maintaining that temperature band, my life cycle will drastically comes down. What are the required function of a thermal design? It should be compact, it should be lightweight, because weight always impact your energy availability. More the weight, your range will come down. So, you always try to reduce the weight of the pack. When you try to reduce the weight of pack, thermal design also need to take care of the thermal part like cooling plate or if we are doing active cooling, the compressors, heat exchanger should have a light weight. it should be easily packageable. Reliable enough, it should last till the battery last. If there is any problem like a temperature sensor is not working or if there is some leakage somewhere, we should be able to service it quickly. cost should be low, as low as possible, because we already have the cost of sales which we cannot reduce. It should consume the minimum power to give you the maximum efficiency. If an active thermal system is there, it should use minimum power of the, because the, again the energy comes from the cell only. It should function between the optimum temperature range and it should also maintain the optimum temperature range of the pack, so that my cycle life and calendar life can be increased. And this way, we can reduce the capital cost of the battery. It should be able to handle or minimize the temperature gradient across the cell or across the pack. If I am reducing the temperature gradient, again that translates into higher cycle, higher calendar life. So, what is the optimum temperature we are looking for? Generally, a lithium ion battery gives its optimum performance between 15 degree to 35 degree centigrade and on an average we say 25 degree centigrade. Below 25 degree what happens? Internal resistance increases, above 35 degree what happens? 
the cell life decreases. So, here because internal resistance increases, so you get more heat that will locally melt some of the portion inside the cell itself that could lead to the, the complete degradation or, or if the chemical reaction started happening inside itself uncontrolled could lead to the thermal runaway. So, at high temperature what is our primary consideration is the life. Yeah, when at lower temperature, the temperature will move up and the resistance will come down. Yeah, but then your temperature is higher. So, your chemical reactions and other things start degrading. The life you have several parts inside several chemicals you have uh, separator, you have chemical again you have a separator. So, those things so lower part it is internal resistance that is why we do not want to go for lower temperature. No, but that would be locally local heating. Okay. Local heating is very dangerous. If I am able to extract that heat and if it is able to spread well, well and good, no, no issue. But that local localized heating would create much problem. So generally, we don't want to go below 15 degree. The another problem is that the solidification of the electrolytes which is in gel form if that solidify the transfer of energy from cathode to anode means transfer of uh, uh, what do you say uh, ions will not happen. So, that is why we do not want to go to lower temperature also we do not want to go for higher temperature because cycle life, life drastically comes down because of the degradation of the reactions. and the life both. Temperature, the temperature impacts the life for electronics it is said very nicely every 10 degree increase in temperature would bring the life bring down the life by half. That means, if my resistor is certified for 1000 hours at 25 degree centigrade, the same resistor life would be 500 hours at 35 degree temperature centigrade. Now, bus bar, now when we design a bus bar for a particular temperature weldment, welding joint is designed for some particular temperature limit. If temperature goes high, what will happen? That will melt if there is some plastic part the temperature may be 60 degree or 65 degree or 70 degree it will fail. There is no moving part inside the battery, but the battery itself is moving. When your temperature increases what happens the strength reduces generally the chance of failure becomes more you always try to maintain the temperature. So, that is what is life safety thermal runaway. I do not want anything to be locally melted, because of the high heat. So, I do not want any local heating hot spot, I do not want that hot, hot spot to be there anywhere. If the temperature is going beyond let us suppose 100, 125 degree centigrade because I am taking the high current or because of the some defect in the cell. If I can still maintain the temperature of 25 degree or 35 degree it would not go for thermal runaway or if the temperature started increasing and somehow we are able to extract that heat we can still save our battery from going thermal runaway, because the first parameter for thermal runaway is uncontrolled temperature.
Now cells are packed, what we have seen in mechanical design, cells are packed. All the cells are almost releasing the equal heat. When I am taking the same current, it is supposed to release the same heat. But what happens, the, the cell at middle, it does not have surfaces for heat transfer. So, that cell would be heated more than the outermost cells. So, it is the responsibility of thermal design also to maintain the similar same cell temperature across. That means, the non-uniform heating or cooling should be avoided because that is again lead to. If my one cell is at 35 degree and another cell is 25 degree. So, as per the theory, my 25 degree cell would be will have higher life, will degrade less than the 35. But in the battery pack, the where the cell is highly degraded is considered as the life of the battery pack. Means, if out of 20 cells, the one cell life is still 100 cycles left and another cell has only 10 cycles left. So, I will select a cell of 10 which has only 10 cycles left. So, that would be the, the complete cycle life, life cycle of the pack. The lowest, the cell which gives the lowest cycle life or calendar life is the parameter for whole pack life cycle. If that cell fail, anyway pack failed. So, the non-uniforming, non-uniform aging effect because of the temperature has to be considered into thermal design and this all are at high temperatures I am talking about. When we require cooling, when we require cooling of the battery pack in the hot environments, moderate to large current demands like 2 C, 3 C, 1 C, there I require cooling. During the fast charging, here I am taking energy out 1 C, 2 C. If I am pumping also energy, at that time also we require cooling because I need to extract the heat produced by the battery pack and the electronics in the battery pack. At low term temperature, what are the primary consideration? Performance degrades. Why? Basically because of the increase in internal resistance. If you charge or discharge too fast, what will happen? There would be high localized heat because your resistance is very high. So, that can permanently damage some particular cells or whole battery pack. So, when heating is required in the cold environment, like Leh and Ladakh, Jammu and Kashmir, Uti during winter, where your temperature is tending towards 0 degree or sub, sub 0. So, at that places, we require heating arrangement to be in the battery to maintain the temperature between 15 to 35. Now, how the heat is getting generated in the battery pack. So, we will try to understand how the heat is getting generated because un unless we do not understand what how the heat is getting generated in the battery pack, we cannot remove it. So, first we need to understand how it is getting generated, then only we can think that is how to remove it, where it is getting generated. So, generally in the battery pack, we generally model this as a joule heating. That means, heat generation is nothing but I square R where I is the current while charging or discharging 
and R is the internal resistance of the battery. So, here this thing where this joule heating is happening generally, it happens in the cells because you are taking you, it has an internal resistance and you are taking either current out or you are putting back the current. In bus bar, because again you are taking the current and it, it all even though it is metal, it has very good thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity, still it poses some resistance. So, because of that and there is other things contact resistance, because of that it can heat up by joule heating I square R. BMS, MOSFET, SUNDS, high amount of current flows there. It, it also has some internal resistance because of that heat is getting generated. So, once you know where and how much heat is getting generated, then only you can design a system to take away those heats or once you know which would be the coldest region, then only you can provide the heat to maintain the temperature. So, the basic formulation I square C B would be using in whole this in, in this subsection. I square C sorry I square R. Uh, where R is the internal resistance. S with this formulation, we can mostly estimate how much heat we need to remove or how much heat we need to add up. Now, this internal, now what is one parameter is current that is depending upon charge and discharge rate. The another parameter is internal resistance. Now, internal resistance has a dependency on lot of things. It is not always constant. It has a dependency on OCV, depth of discharge. It is also dependent on temperature. Similar way for bus bar, it is a temperature dependency. Resistance changes with temperature. For BMS, again it is a temperature dependence the BMS tracks or MOSFETs or contactors, resistance changes with the temperature. So, if we have to really very accurately measure or accurately estimate, we also have to worry about at what temperature it is working. So, example problem here, the heat generated which need to be removed, what we say? It is a heat load it is a load which we need to take out or we have to put it. In simple term, we say it is a heat load. So, what we have done in mechanical is a 2 P 16 S configuration, where nominal capacity of the cell was 15 A h and the nominal voltage was 3.65 volt. The internal impedance or internal resistance is 10 milli ohm. Generally, for cells, the 10 milli ohm internal resistance is very high. If the cell is new, a good quality cell will have some 2 milli ohm, 1 milli ohm, not more than that. A medium quality cell will have up to 5 milli ohm internal resistance. However, this cell resistance also changes with the life or with the degradation. When we talk about end of the life of the cell, that is around 70 percent energy when it can take or give. At that time, the impedance becomes almost twice. So, when I am designing a thermal management system, it need not to be only for new cells, it should also serve when the cell is degraded, degraded 
till the end of life cycle and at that time the internal resistance becomes almost double so that's why even though for a new cell the internal resistance is 5 milliohm but end of the life till that time thermal management system has to work becomes 10 milliohm so when we calculate the heat load we calculate always worst case scenarios worst case scenarios worst case design scenarios means if i am <coughs> if i am going to run the battery for 2c maximum i'll uh, while calculating the heat load i'll always consider 2c i'll not consider average 1c 1.5c 2c unless i don't have a complete data if somebody says even though for 50 percent of the time it is going to work at 0.5 c only and rest 50 percent we do not know it can go to 2 c then uh, then heat load is always calculated at the worst case scenario that means it would be calculated at 2 c. So, the internal resistance is 10 milliohm if the module is discharged from 100 percent to 20 percent SOC at the rate of 1 c calculate the heat generated energy expelled by the module and compare energy lost as a heat to the total module energy in discharge duration. So, my battery is 100 percent charge SO, SOC is 100 percent now I am discharging this to 20 percent SOC with 1 c rating 1 c discharge that means in this case it is a 2 p so 30 ampere continuous current ok. Now, what is cell current at the 1 c for 1 cell it is a 15 ampere what is cell internal resistance are 10 milliohm for in 1 cell for 1 cell what would be the heat generation. So, I square r it is a 2.25 watt how many cells we have total in the pack 32. So, even it is 1 c the 2 cell together gives 13, 30 ampere current 1 cell is always giving 15 ampere only at 1 c. So, the total cell is 32. So, what is our total heat generation in pack 72 watt the time for 100 consider the linear assumptions the SOC is decreasing in linear with time. So, 100 percent to 20 percent SOC at 1 C rate in 1 hour it is supposed to go for 100 percent to 0 percent. So, it takes 2880 seconds that means, 3600 seconds it would have taken for complete 1 C discharge, but here 400 percent now it is 100 percent to 80 uh, 20 percent. So, it is 80 percent. So, it takes 2880 seconds. So, heat energy lost total. So, here it is joule per second what is nothing but joule per second multiply with time. So, this much kilo joule of energy is lost heat lost by the pack it is not heat energy it is energy taken out from that pack it is not heat energy it is a total energy taken from the pack is 6.8 kilo joule and the energy lost due to heat is 207.36 kilo joule. I think some number is garbar I will come back to you on the next class. So, pack energy from 100 to 20 percent SOC ha yeah. So, heat energy lost by one cell is 6.48 kilo joule in 2880 second. So, how many cells we have 32 cells we have. So, the total heat lost by the pack is 207.36 kilo joule. Now, the how much energy we have taken out from the pack either heat or electrical is 5045.76 kilo joule divide this by this we will get the percentage lost as a heat it is a 4.1 percent huge. So, what we see the 4.1 percent energy is lost because of the internal resistance and if I do not remove this heat what will happen 
it will keep on increasing the temperature. We can reduce the heat loss how? By either by selecting a better cell which has better internal impedance or in internal resistance, resistance or by discharging at lower current which will be more helpful by discharging at lower current because it is a square of I. So, we will end up here next class we will see uh, energy flow through first principle and thermal management techniques and at the end we will see some case studies. Okay.